Hi, everybody. Welcome to a new weekend, a new edition of Houston Sports Weekly, our weekly podcast here on KPRC 2 Plus and click2houston.com. I'm KPRC 2 Sports Director Randy McAvoy. A two parter today. I've got the first segment talking U of H basketball. And of course, U of H is our theme for the entire 30 minutes. First segment, my chat with University of Houston AD Chris Pesman. And here in about 15 minutes, Chancellor Johnson, KPRC2 sports reporter, catches up with U of H beat writer from the Houston Chronicle, Joseph Duarte. The Houston Cougars, no doubt the hot topic here in H-Town, as they should be. They're number one rated team in the nation. They have proven all season long they are a team to be reckoned with. And when you look at what they've accomplished so far as they open the AAC tournament coming up in a matter of hours in Fort Worth, they have stayed healthy. That has been the number one positive from the season. They've stayed healthy. They've had a mix of veteran players. They've had newcomers, especially a guy like Jarris Walker, who's a projected lottery pick in the NBA draft. This will probably be one and done for Jarris Walker. But right now, he has business to take care of. We featured him on Thursday night on KPRTC2 Sports as well. But it's all about the Cougs and the AAC tournament and this great run as they get ready for their move to the Big 12 this summer. Here's some of my conversation with Athletics Director Chris Pesp. All right, here on campus, University of Houston, uh, hanging out with a very busy guy that's got a lot of things going on right now. The athletics director here at U of H, Chris Pesman. Good to see you. Good to see you. What a busy time. Uh, we, we've hit the spring. Uh, March Madness is around the corner. You happen to have a number one team in the yeah. nation right now. Things are going pretty good. There's a lot of smiles around this campus right now. Yeah, knock on wood, uh, <laughs> it's a good time to be a Houston Cougar. Um, yeah. Just obviously, you know, with the visibility of what Kelvin, the basketball program, have done and what they continue to do. And the number one ranking, you know, I mean, it's a number and mm -hmm. everybody chases it. And uh, it doesn't really matter right now. It only matters at the end of the season. And uh, yeah. I think that's what everybody's focused on. How about overall just the job he has done to, to get the program to where it is? Forget about what's going to happen yep. hopefully in the next few weeks, but the prominent program that U of H is again under the leadership of Coach Sam. Yeah, regardless of what happens with the remainder of the season, what he has done and what the staff has done and the way the kids buy into that program and the way they represent us on the court and off the court, it's what you want, especially somebody that sits in my role. Um, just such an incredible ambassador for the university, but also the city of Houston. And, the, and that's what's fun about it is the way we play, the kids play. I say we, the, the kids and, and the program plays. Mm -hmm. I th in so many ways, it is reflective of our city, you know, just – fighting for everything, every every loose ball, every 50 ball, 50-50 ball, every rebound. And that's kind of who we are. And and uh, I think it's easy to buy into the way those kids play and, and to root for them. You look around uh, the environment that's been created now for Tita Center, I mean, outstanding arena. You're selling it out. Uh, that's a good problem to have uh, when you're putting putting fans in the seats. Yeah, it's it's a great problem to have. I mean, it, it, the, it, it's, it sounds a little, you know, disrespectful but the best feeling i can say is hey we're sold out i can't help you you know where you been you know that's right. it's 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 a real thing it happens every game and uh you know to see our students turn out and the way they've bought in and kids lining up at, an hour before the game that is what you always hope for in the in these moments and and now we just need to be mindful of that and carry that forward um this is a really special time but you know, we want to make this thing last as long as we can, and, and God willing, we will. You came on board as AD, and you're, you, you went here. You, yeah. you, you bleed red here, literally, uh, University of Houston. Uh, when Kelvin was hired, he said back then, we, we can win here. We can win at a very high level. And there were a lot of double takes like, what? Are you sure about that? He was confident from day one that what we're seeing now could happen. Yeah, you know, obviously, Coach has got a very acute eye for what was possible here. Yeah. And... Um, we drifted away from that for a long time. I mean, it, we had moments where there was moments of success, but not sustained year in, year out success like what we're having right now. And and his vision and just will is what got us to this place. And, and he was right. You know, we all, I wasn't here when he got hired, but I came in a few years after and just yeah. following his lead and trying to help support them any way possible and turn it into what this has become. I mean, we're, 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 we're nudging up against, you know, a really, elite status and um, mm -hmm. I don't want to put that on us yet but that's what we're chasing and, and with coach there and with the program and coaches and kids we got a chance. 
Big 12's just around the corner. I know <laughs> you guys are nonstop in that transition. With all that's happening now and hopefully uh, successful the next few weeks, that aside, you got a Big 12 transition coming up. How exciting is that? Oh. And I guess the work to get there is still, still there. Oh, yeah. We're, yeah. We, we have just – yeah, I mean, we're scratching the surface of everything that needs to get done. And I, I, we've been working on this for a long time. Since the day that right. that invitation was extended, we knew that there's a, there's a lot of work that has to get into it. And there's moments where you feel like, okay, we're getting there, and you realize it's, it's a false peak, and the, the Himalayas are staring right behind <laughs> it of just stuff that's got to get done. But what makes it easy is the momentum and the energy and the excitement that everybody has around the program. Um, you know, I just got a ticket report this morning. Our new season ticket sales continue to go through the roof for football. We're over 4,100 new season tickets sold basically in the last two weeks now. Right. And so there's continued excitement, but we have to continue to push out in every direction. And, um, and fortunately, it helps grease the wheels a lot when you've got a really successful program like what's happening with basketball right now. Does it kind of sink in uh, this football specifically when that schedule came out and it's like, here we are. <laughs> yeah, that we're, was, we're there um, now. I got a, I had a pretty early gl glimpse of it and I was, it was, you know, I don't want to say sobering, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's big boy. You know, I mean, this is it. Here we go. We wanted it. This, now, I was going to say, this yeah. is what everybody we, wants. We asked for it. Now we're the, now we're the dog that bit the car and is getting drugged down the street a little bit, but <laughs> that's okay. I mean, that's, there's things that we're going to do really well and that we can knock out right away, but there's some things that will take a little bit more time. But that's, that's the fun part of all this is growing into it. And, uh, and it's everything we've wanted for a really long time, and now we get a chance to experience it. And also have, and to your point, the success of basketball elevating the stature of everything as we prepare for this transition and right. Final Four being in town, all that continues to bring more focus and uh, more energy and more effort from everybody. So we, we couldn't be more excited. Got a lot of work to do, but it's all the good stuff. I want to end it with this and uh, you know, the fans, Cougar Nation, and you just mentioned the ticket sales going through the roof. What's your message right now to everybody out there in Cougar Nation that with what's about to happen, the next few weeks are going to be fun, yeah. but big picture is this Big 12. Yeah, it, you know, yeah. yeah, the next few weeks will be a blast. Jump on board. Bandwagon's big enough for everybody. We're not kicking <laughs> anybody off. But we, you know, as we prepare for next fall and this transition, we need everybody. This is the time. If you were ever interested, had any affinity for not just the University of Houston, but for the city of Houston, this is good for everybody. And uh, I'm not saying that because I'm the athletic director and I sit in this chair, but I live in this community mm -hmm. and I know what this is going to mean for everybody. And I can't be more excited. So come on, get out of here. We need you. You're not going to be sleeping much over the next uh Weeks and months, are you? No, no. <laughs> it, it, the sleep is uh, underrated. <laughs> um, but I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I nice trade off. Yeah, I mean, Randy, I, I you know, like you mentioned, I played here. Yeah. I went to school here. Uh, I worked here early in my career, and I was here when the Southwest Conference fell apart and we were left out. And now to be here in this, you know, seminal moment, I'm, you know. I get goosebumps, yeah. and uh, I can't wait to share and enjoy this with everybody else. Awesome. Keep up great work. Chris right, Pesman, Athletics Director here at the University of Houston. Thanks for the time, man. Thank you, buddy. Go yeah. Cougs. All right, great chat uh, with Pez, as always. What a job he has done as the Athletics Director, and I really enjoyed the insight he brought us uh, when it comes to the move to the Big 12 Conference. This isn't something that just happens overnight. This is a long process as they make the move and transition out of the AAC into the Big 12 Conference. Again, that will happen coming up this summer. But how sweet would it be to end their run in the AAC, end it right here with a Final Four appearance at NRG Stadium. They are certainly built to make a run. It all starts with the AAC tournament uh, this weekend in Fort Worth. And next week, March Madness begins. We'll see where they're seated and where they begin their tournament run. Again, hopefully it ends at NRG Stadium. All right, time for a break here on Houston Sports Weekly. We come back, KPRC 2 sports reporter Chancellor Johnson takes over his conversation with Cougars beat writer Joseph Dorte from the Chronicle when Houston Sports Weekly's podcast continues. Welcome back to Houston Sports Weekly, and we are joined by a very special guest, the longtime beat reporter for the Houston Cougars, Joseph Dorte. Joseph, thanks for joining us on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Now, the Houston Cougars came into this season as one of the top teams in the country, and now they're ending the regular season as the top team in the country. What's impressed you the most about this year's group? Well, I, I think that they've, that they've managed and lived up to what many thought they could be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they began the year number three, uh, 
there's no shame in losing to Alabama, even mm-hmm. though they were up 15. Think mm-hmm. about that. They could have won that yeah. game. Mm-hmm. And then you lose by one to Temple. So just the fact that, you know, this has never been a team that had prolonged losing streaks. So you don't mm-hmm. see the seven or eight losses in a year. But f- to see them mm-hmm. run through the conference, go to Virginia. I remember being in Virginia mm-hmm. and do what they did there. Uh, it just they proved that it wasn't just a uh, – you know, it shouldn't be at this point a surprise to anybody. Kelvin Sampson seems to replace four guys every year, and they make it to the Elite Eight, maybe another Final Four. But yeah. they have, they've certainly have lived up to things this year. They definitely have. But you know, we kind of were talking to some of the players earlier. It still seems like they're a little bit disrespected. When you, when you talk about some of the other top number one seeds, you talk about the Kansases, you know, so the Purdue's, and you know, some of the other the other teams there. Do, do you kind of get that sense too? Is it is it the conference, or what do you kind of make of all that? You know, I've, I've been around this team for twelve years, so. Some of it was deserving back in the old sure. days. You know, Conference USA, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just never got any respect. But then, you know, you had UConn early on in this conference win a national championship. Cincinnati had always been good. You added Wichita State. They were a good program. Uh, SMU's had some good years in Memphis. So you, you look at the entire body and you, you do wonder sometimes. And I know Kelvin Sampson, you know, we saw him getting on top of tables in celebration <laughs> in Memphis. He's been on this, yeah. this little – uh, podium and soapbox for many years about the lack of uh, respect that it's a one bid, maybe two bid league in the NCAA tournament, and it's sort of what Houston has had to deal with. This is uh, it's going to change with the moves of the Big Twelve. They will have plenty of company in the in the NCAA tournament next year with them if, if they're able to to sure. duplicate this. But I mean, that's sort of you know what what you have to deal with, and the 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 impressive thing is that. They know sort of what the cards are that they're dealt, and it's never bothered them. They don't act or play or run anything in this program that screams mid-major or lower level. This is, without the championship, this is a blue blood. I mean, they're about as close as, as you get to uh, to teams that have, have been in the uh, lexicon of, of college basketball, the UCLA's, Kansas, Deuce, those, you know, Houston, Houston's been the five Final Four, so... You know, why not? Yeah, looking to make it six here in Houston for the Final Four. Now, we'll turn the attention now towards, obviously, March is here. we got the conference tournament coming up. And then, of course, the big dance, the NCAA tournament. As this team looks to make a push for the Final Four, who is the X factor for this team, in your opinion? You know, <clears throat> I, I like Tremont Mark. I mean, I'm, the, I'm the same way. I'm with you. And because, for one, uh, and rightfully so, Marcus Sasser and mm-hmm. Jamal should get a lot of the, mm-hmm. lot of the attention. Tremont just kind of seems to go out there every night, and you never know if, you know, one night uh, might have 15, might have 20. But then he does all the other things. He plays really good defense. Uh, I've, I've seen some stat lines where he's at, you know, five assists or so, and, you know, he's another guy that rebounds. Mm-hmm. So you look at them. Uh, otherwise, you know, I, I, I would think maybe a guy like a J1 uh, Roberts also, mm-hmm. just because of, you know, the, the runs that Houston's had lately. They've always had a guy that was really good on the glass and could, that could sort of body mm-hmm. you or, play, you know, play aggressive. And, you know, Reggie Chaney in the Final Four run was that guy who was sort of your bruiser. Mm-hmm. And if you mix him, J1 Roberts, and Jairus Walker, uh, that's a pretty formidable, formidable front court. So I like I like Tremont, and I like uh, Jaywan. I'm with you as well on Tremont, Mark. It, it does feel like you know he doesn't get enough love because you just mentioned a lot of the the praise goes to Marcus Sasser or Jamal Shedd, but. You know, I, I feel like there's going to be some teams who will play U of H who may haven't, you know, they, they've heard about U of H, right? And they're like, hey, we have to stop Marcus Sasser. Or we have to, hey, th- th- that kid, Jairus Walker, the, the, the freshman, they'll get a lot of hype only for Tremont to go out and lead the, lead the game of scoring. And it just kind of goes to uh, the, the impact. He's almost like a Swiss Army life and, and, and what he's been able to provide for this team. And they've always had guys like that. During their final four run, you know, Tremont was uh, – sort of a reserve, mm-hmm. and he comes in and he gets a, a big putback against, uh, I believe it was Rutgers when they were down, and, and it propelled them to the, uh, I believe it was the, the Sweet 16, uh, that one. You know, these wins all run together now. They've sure. had so many wins. Yeah. Uh, and then you look at other years, you know, whether it was a, a Quentin Grimes or somebody. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they can, they can run out so many different guys and it doesn't have to be – if Marcus Sasser doesn't score right. 25 or 30, they're done. They're toast. Now, last year they all decided to have an off night against Villanova. <laughs> right, right. And you, it's hard to come back from that, but I think this team is built. Mm-hmm. When you factor in the defense, you factor mm-hmm. in the rebounding, the hustle stats, all the little things, and then you get two or three guys that are going to give you between 10 and yep. 15 points, that, that's good enough yeah. to get you – uh, a long way in March, yeah. and I think the key for this team, they're going to be a number one seed. Yep. How 
can they uh, take that and run with it? Because they've had the number one seed, uh, the ranking in the regular season. Mm-hmm. It's a little different story when everybody's going to be, yeah, <laughs> everybody's going to be gunning for you. Yeah. And no matter how many times you try to be in the backyard shooting that half court shot when you're a kid, thinking, okay, I just want it. Ninety nine percent of those times, those yeah. shots don't go in. Yeah. So you sort of have to have a different mindset when uh, when March and the madness starts. Yeah, I hope they didn't use up all their magic in Memphis because you're going to need it when you get to the uh, the, the NCAA tournament. You know, it's also kind of going back to, to our conversation about Tremont and, and just the rest of this group. I thought it was funny. He mentioned that uh, he, in his opinion, that they have the best trio, you know, potentially in the country. Marcus Sasser agreed. And, and to me, I kind of laugh at it because like, if that's the trio, then what is Jairus Walker, right? Like, like that talks like to me that goes to show you the talent on this team. That you know, you have Jamal Shedd, you have uh, Marcus Sasser, Shaman Mark, and a guy who's going to be a top ten pick in just a couple of months in the NBA draft. Yeah, and you know, I, I think part of that with Jairus is he's not flamboyant. Right. He's not a a big talker, mm-hmm. um, but he goes out there and one night he'll he'll have a posterizing dunk. Or he'll step back and hit a huge mm-hmm. three, and you're thinking, okay, guys that big with, with that type right. of set, don't do that. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, the, the word they keep using is freak, you know, that yeah. the just natural ability. Uh, but you, you, you look at also uh, the, 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 the backcourt, and, you know, are they the best trio? That's hard to say. Sure. You know, you haven't seen it all. Uh, and I think what, what goes against them is a lot of people still, even though what they've accomplished, don't look at Houston mm-hmm. like they do. UCLA or mm-hmm. Kansas or some of those other programs and it's it's no knock on them because they've got the body of work to prove that mm-hmm. hey we're we should mm-hmm. be up there and I think it, just a lot of people just aren't used to Houston being at a discussion mm-hmm. let me think about it every time a lot of people from outside this program talk about Houston what do they bring up five slam pajama right Clyde Drexler Hakeem Olajuwon mm-hmm. well a lot, not a lot happened mm-hmm. in those 30 plus years after that <laughs> right. so there's some new names in mm-hmm. town you know there's the the Quentin Grimes and mm-hmm. the Galen Robinsons and the Marcus Hester and Jamal Shedd so yeah. it things are changing you look at all the banners around here and you know, I'm, that's, I'm not, that's a lot of them. Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> around the time I was born, they they sort of stopped winning for a while, and then now all of a sudden, yeah. you know, they're making up. So it, it's it's been the the ride and the storyline of a Final Four berth in their own city. It's only happened four other times for a team to play mm-hmm. in the actual city that their school was yeah. in. Um, that would be. Uh, that would be worth the price of admission. Yeah, absolutely. I want to go back to Jairus Walker for a second. Obviously, came into the program a five-star recruit. But, you know, you get into – just because you're, you're ranked that high doesn't necessarily mean anything. Kelvin Sampson would tell you that. Kelvin Sampson, he's been on the record multiple times of he does not care. He either likes you or he doesn't. But what he's been able to do this season to provide for the team, for you, what's impressed you the most about him? About Jairus? About Jairus. Well, first – you know, if Kelvin wants to talk stars, he'll go to the planetarium or he'll go out to NASA. <laughs> yeah. Those are the only stars that he's interested in. But, you know, this was a guy that, that yeah, they, the, this is the guy that doesn't come to Houston in the past, yeah. that they don't even get a phone call. They're not wasting gas or the, or the private jet to go see. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Jairus Walker's recruitment was very unusual. Qantas White deserves a lot of credit. And then you look at what Kelvin and, and Kelvin did. Uh, just the the amount of work they all put into to recruiting him, Jarris wanted somewhere that he trusted. He wanted a family atmosphere, and what better place to go than the place that that the Sampsons built? I mean, yeah. you go down any hallway in this building, mm-hmm. and you see Lauren Sampson, you see Kellen Sampson, you see the grandkids, you see Mrs. Sampson. That that sort of sold mm-hmm. Jarris Walker on. Hey, it may not be Duke, it may not be North Carolina, but guess what? The Who's number one right now? Yep. So it's not like he got shortchanged mm-hmm. in all this. And he also felt that this was a place that could develop yeah. him even more. They do a great job of development. Are there some things that you look at, maybe his shot-wise, that they could correct? Yeah, but they're not going to mess with anything yeah. at this point <laughs> and, or at all. Right. Let the next level mm-hmm. handle that. Let him just come in, be what you think he can be, mm-hmm. develop him, and I think – in the next few weeks, we will see all of that finally come together. They've been in the kitchen putting everything yep. in the bowl, yep. and now it's time to cook. Yeah. And, you know, be a nice meal on uh, April 3rd for them. <laughs> it would be How lovely. do you like that little chef analogy <laughs> no, that's there? That's pretty good. You've been learning from Kelvin Sampson, I see. <laughs> try, try every once in a while. So, so let's, uh, I want to get to more of the tournament now uh, as we wrap up here. You kind of mentioned it earlier. Last year, they picked the worst game to, like, not be able to buy a bucket. With this year's team. They don't get to the Final Four because fill in the blank. 
they don't get to the final four. Or if they don't get to the final four, I should say. You know, oh, that's a, that's a tough one. Uh, you know, the, preparation is not going to be the issue. Mm-hmm. Game planning, scouting, none of that's going to be the issue. I, I think it comes down to at some point – no matter how good you are, mm-hmm. and there's been some some teams that you go back in history and say they should have won the championship. Look, look at 1983. Yep. Houston should have won the national championship. I'm going to nod my head and pretend like and, I know and, that. Yeah. That's somebody born in the 90s. You're going to get a lot of phone calls <laughs> to your studio saying, too soon. Yeah. Uh, of course, yeah, like you said, you weren't born. Uh, sure, Joseph. <laughs> but, but something always goes wrong. Mm-hmm. And I think it won't be something that Houston does Whereas I've seen teams get up for them so much that will go on a 15 of 20 from three-point land or you just see something freaky happen. A last second, Jordan Poole from Michigan, I was there. It happens, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it happens. And, and then I, it's over. And it, just it, like that, it's, it's and done. you move on yep. and, you know, wait till next year. But – I just I haven't seen that this year. Mm-hmm. They've had some close games. They've had some tight ones, and you're wondering, how's Kent State still in this game? <laughs> yeah. But we've been proven as March comes along, yeah. Kent State's a pretty good team. So I think mm-hmm. to answer your question, it, it's just going to be something fluky that happens. But I think this program has built enough goodwill that something good sure. should probably happen to sure. them because they've gone through a lot. And, and the last one, we'll wrap up with this one. In your, for your prediction, how do you see the NCAA tournament playing out? Obviously, we haven't gotten to Selection Sunday yet. We'll know, you know this Sunday, but how do you kind of envision this thing playing out with the Houston Cougars? Well, I think Houston, and not in any order, Alabama, Kansas, Houston, and UCLA, those are my number ones. Okay. Uh, I think Purdue was like on that border. Sure. I think Purdue, out of all the ones we talked about, it's the first one to get eliminated. I think I think they'll I be the first one. I don't see a sixteen. They're, they're just that team. They're like every year, is always you know yeah. uh, with a star player, and yeah. then it just doesn't they get beat in the Sweet Sixteen, and that's it. Right. And so you know, I don't see a sixteen beating a one. Mm-hmm. I, I see happening. I see Houston getting to that that regional championship, mm-hmm. and then when you get to that point, it's, uh, you know, it, it's pretty much just roll the dice. But I, I think. Uh, if there's ever been a season that's wide open, this is it. You don't have just a team that just steamrolled everybody. So, I mean, if if you're a betting person, and, I, and I'm not, but if <laughs> but if but if you got a little extra money, or if you just want to want to put some chores out there, where if you and the wife bet, and you're not married, but say, hey, I'll do the dishes for sure, a week sure. if if Houston wins, uh-huh. that's not a that might be a safe bet. Yeah. You might get a a few nights off and. <laughs> Let her do the laundry, or you do the laundry. With whoever's the bigger U of H <laughs> basketball fan yeah. in your household, yeah. uh, but there, uh, there's a, a golden opportunity Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Uh, last one for me. Selfishly, in a championship game, who would you like to see Houston play right here in H Town? Because I, I have an answer. Well, I, I can give you mine I, first if you like. No, I mean I'm, I'm okay with this because I mean. Look, I check my allegiances at the door okay. and stuff, but I, and, I, and I'm a Texas grad. I'm a Longhorn, and for those of you out there that didn't know that, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but many of them do. Sure. I think from the standpoint of mm. if you're going to have it in Houston and there's mm. 75,000, just make them all Texans. Make everybody show their driver's license at the door. <laughs> Only Texas people sure. get into this. Thing. That one will move the needle mm. more than anything out there. UCLA, Houston, you got the dome course, right next of door. Course. Game of the City. Great storyline. I think those would be my two. I'm not a big, hey, let's see if some so and so can win a second title in a row or a mm. third. Eh, let somebody else win. So those are the two juicy ones mm. that I have. Now, Aggie fans, y'all are looking pretty good mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, yeah. I think they're a sweet 16. I, I, but, I, they're a hot you know, team. Right? Baylor, I wouldn't want to play in them right now. Baylor's like that. Mm-hmm. Maybe TCU, depending on when you get them. But I don't think there'd be anything bigger. Than, than Texas and Houston and the folks here mm. and the whole Big 12 coming mm. up, that, that, yeah, that'd be some, some ultra juiciness oh. for, the, for that game. It, it would be great. And I know you say you don't want to see kind of the repeat, but I wouldn't mind seeing Houston, Kansas, because I think they've been the, the top two teams all season long. And with the talent that Kansas has and with, the, with this group that the University of Houston has this year, and of course leading up to what's going to happen twice a year minimum, Next year, I wouldn't mind seeing that party start just a little bit earlier. Just with also, too, with them being the best two teams in the country, that would be a fun Final Four. Now, I'll, I'll add this before we wrap up. An interesting thing to watch. As the number one seed, you know, they'll get the 8-9 matchup mm-hmm. in the second round. I was talking with some people today that are around the tournament, 
and don't be surprised if you see a duke or a uh, one of the blue buds mm. who are used to being one seeds mm -hmm. having to play the role of mm -hmm. that lower seed eight nine a 10 or 12 and how is that going to impact it? Because all of a sudden, if you're Houston or Alabama or, or Purdue, who've never been number ones for a while, yeah. you got that pressure now of the, what's on the jersey. Yeah. You know, Houston's played Kentucky. They've played Arizona in the past. they played Illinois. They've but, been there. Yeah, they've been there. But it's going to be interesting to see the roles yeah. reversed. Yeah. And that could happen in this tournament. And what well, we do know that Kelvin Sampson, at least with this Houston Cougars team, when they will be a one seed, they won't be worried about that at all. Kelvin Sampson will have them ready to play. I can't wait, man. It's going to be fun. We'll have plenty more with Joseph Duarte throughout March Madness. And, and appreciate you for having us on, man. All right, man. Yes, appreciate sir. It. No, thanks.